Hey guys, it's IP, and today I'm going to be making a optimization guide for DayZ. So this game, as you know, is notorious for bad performance on really any sort of rig. I haven't run into a, good, a computer where it really runs good without doing these optimizations before playing. So hopefully through this I will be able to increase your frame rate a significant amount and make it more enjoyable for you. So without further ado, here we go. So first things first, um, when well, I'll, I'll go over in-game settings after I do this, because at, as it stands, the uh, this there's some stuff you got to do outside of the game with some configuration files before you can, uh, you know, do your actual in-game settings, because in-game settings aren't as relevant as this stuff. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do or not the first thing you have to do but the first thing I would recommend would be um, going and to your documents where um, this there's a default directory in your documents where uh, named Daisy as you can see here um, open that up open the one that's whatever your name is the name of your PC and then it's day it'll say in the type it'll say Daisy profile file redundancy um, but uh, yeah so here there's a few settings we need to touch so the first thing you're gonna wanna find is scene complexity uh, you can hit control F and type it in I just typed in scene to find it and then there you go scene, compl scene complexity you're gonna wanna change this okay my recommendation if you wanna have a good good performance on pretty much like any mid to high end system I can't speak for low end stuff because the, it, you really shouldn't be trying to play this game on a low end system because it just it doesn't work out well change this to 150,000 um, that that works for me I'm not sure why it was set to something else because it was running it was running fine at 750,000 but whatever so let's change that to 150,000 the next thing you're going to want to change is shadow distance or sh shadows distance. I don't know why it's like that, but um, yeah. So change this to 100. I already have that set to 100. This, I mean, as it implies, adjusts how far out shadows render, um, which is not, in my opinion, a huge deal because it's not like um, your view distance. Like You can still see stuff far away. It's just they don't cast shadows necessarily. Then the next one you want to touch would be view distance which is right below it obviously um, I have this set to 1400 1400 um, again this uh, I found gives you a pretty good range of vision like you can see pretty pretty far and it's not gonna you're not gonna be like handicapping yourself by cutting down that view distance like ridiculously low or anything so this again on my system which I'll put the uh, the specs in the description um, this is that's a good setting for me as far as I have been able to find and the next one right under it preferred object view distance I have this set to 1000 which handles perfectly fine I mean nothing bad about it so I believe that also has I, I think that has something to do similarly to view distance. I, I don't know. I think that has to do with like how far out a building will render. Like the map will render to 1400, and then the, but like a built buildings and stuff will only render to a thousand. Again, that's more of a guess, but not entirely positive. And then terrain grid. This is set. I think it was like for me when it was defaulted, it set to something like seven point two three blah 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 lots of lots of numbers um, set it to 3.125 I have no idea what it does but it does seem to improve performance so yeah I that's that's what I've been told so I set it I haven't noticed any issues so it's not like I mean if you change it it's it's not harming or hurting you in any way or whatever so just go ahead and set that to 3.125 so keep in mind for all of this these settings that I have here are um, sort of working in the whole like the uh, towards benefiting an AMD system running an AMD FX 9590 so for Intel systems which are obviously I mean they're further ahead so in terms of like technology and whatnot I mean you could up these a bit higher but this again is more of a thing where it's like how low can you crank it without it hurting you hurting your actual gameplay 
uh, performance, like cutting down your render distance too short or any of that. Like I want to, I want to be able to squeeze out as much performance as I can, and this seems to be that really good sweet spot. So after you've changed those, just go up here and hit File, then Save. Make sure that saves. I mean, if you want to check again, you can go in and make sure they stay the same. Yep, there you go. Looks good. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so now we're gonna, there's one other step we're gonna do outside of the game, but we're gonna do this after we edit the in-game settings, because, and I'll explain why in a moment. Okay, here we are in-game, and now I'm just gonna quickly run over these in-game settings. So, first off, head to video, I'll configure the video. Um, here we have these settings. Uh, overall quality, don't touch it because it's just going to end up switching itself to custom if you edit in these tabs. Um, rendering resolution, this does not adjust your interface resolution. This adjusts the resolution at which the game world, like the 3D stuff, renders. So if you want to drop this to increase performance, like say you have a weaker GPU, if you want to drop this to increase performance, um, without actually dropping your without sort of giving up your native resolution then that's a good way to do that uh, brightness and gamma this is sort of just do whatever I have it like this right now I'm not sure I don't remember why exactly but I have it um, vsync this uh, I'll always just disable it I don't see any situation in which vsync is really all that good user interface uh, again this is sets the user interface resolution so you can have native resolution without actually having the 3d resolution being the same then size this is preference um, aspect ratio pretty obvious texture quality okay set video memory to auto because um, if you try to set it to one of these other things um, the, say you do actually have 2048 megabytes like me like I've got two two gigabyte cards um, yes you could set it to that but I've heard that it still won't necessarily allocate the full size of your video memory to the game, so set it to auto, which basically just automatically uses as much as it needs. Um, texture detail, again, if you have a decent GPU and a fair amount of video memory, set it as high as you can. It doesn't have a big effect on performance, assuming you have enough video memory. And texture filtering, just put it wherever the hell you want, because it has like no performance effect. It, I mean, yeah, it does, but it's very, very negligible. Quality, this one's important. Um, objects, this has um, sort of a huge performance impact on your CPU. This determines how many, how, not so much how many objects are rendered, but the detail at which they are rendered. So, actually, it, it does handle as how many. It's, it handles a lot of stuff. So, as you can see in the description, objects, detail, level, geometry. Geometry, quality, and amount of objects in the scene. So, the more, the higher you have this, the more objects there are. So, this, I guess, includes vehicle, or not vehicles, buildings, and, uh, like, terrain stuff, like grass, because whenever I turn it up, I see more grass. Um, and terrain, this, so yeah, that, that, that actually, uh, impacts your... CPU performance a lot. So if you have a bad CPU, turn it down. For me, I have an FX9590 and high it seems to be the sweet spot. I haven't really turned it up any higher than that. Um, and terrain. So this one, as far as I know, doesn't have a huge impact on your CPU, but I, I don't know. I have it on very high and with an FX9590, I don't have too much trouble. Well, I don't have any trouble really, but yeah. Clouds, this is the big one. This one, I'm not sure what it impacts, but it doesn't matter what it impacts because no matter what you have it set it to, other than disable, the uh, frame rate goes to hell and back. And yeah, it's not, not a fun time. Disable clouds. Um, shadows, this has a small impact on your CPU and a large impact on your GPU. So if you have a good GPU, then set your shadows to as high as you want, pretty much. The impact on your CPU is very, very small, so not too much to worry about. For me, I have it on very high because I have... Um, decent GPUs. And then the rendering tab, this one is kind of important as well. Anti-aliasing, as you, anyone who knows anything about PC gaming, anti-aliasing has a fairly large effect on performance. Um, depending on the type of anti-aliasing, it uh, can either affect your CPU or your GPU, or both. I have it set to low just so I get a little bit of anti-aliasing without too much of an impact on performance. Uh, you could easily turn it off. The visual change is not massive, but 
it's again sort of a preference thing alpha to coverage um, this just determines what is soft or smoothened what is smooth is that even a word um, so yeah all trees and grass this is a uh, I'm not sure why it has like these different types. Um, I just set it to all trees and grass so it does everything. Like all the trees and grass as, as it would imply. Edge smoothing. This is lots of different types. Well, two different types of anti-aliasing. Um, I believe SMAA is something that's intensive on your CPU. And FXAA is something that's very lightly, um, very lightly impacts your GPU's performance. So I have it on FXAA very, very high. HDR quality, this one, I'm not sure exactly what the hell is going on with this one, considering the only two options are very low and low. I just keep it on very low, and I've read that putting it on very low is the best option. Um, ambient occlusion, enabled or disabled, this is something, it, the, the visual impact isn't huge, but the performance impact is, so I would disable that if you're trying to squeeze the best out of your system that you can. Post-process quality. This is stuff like certain things like depth of field and um, different types of blurring and stuff like when your character has status effects and stuff. Um, I would just disable this considering uh, it's not huge and technically, or not really technically, but it can get kind of annoying having your screen like blur every once in a while when you're like injured or whatever. So yeah, I would disable that. Um, bloom and rotation blur, those are both totally a preference thing and uh, they don't massively uh, impact performance from what I've been able to tell. So, yeah. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory, so screw with those to your heart's content and see what you find fancy or fits your fancy shit, whatever that means. Okay. Um, field of view. I think you guys know what field of view does. I just wish it gave th they gave us a fucking number. That would be lovely. Okay, and now we're going to hop back out to do the last step in optimization. So, yeah, see you in a sec. Okay, here we are back again, and now for the last final step. So, head over, I'm going to bring this over here, head over to your DAISY in your Steam library, uh, right-click it and go to Properties, which bottom of the right-click menu. Um, and once you get to these four tabs, you'll be in general. If it doesn't start in general, go to general. Um, then set launch options. And this one little command can increase your frame rate from, I believe, the what it was claimed that you could increase it by 10 FPS in cities and 20 FPS elsewhere. And from what I've been able to tell, it actually does, I'm not sure if it does to that extent, but it does give you a pretty big boost. Um, there are some downsides, which I'll explain in a second. But basically, go set launch options then type this it's a dash win xp this basically causes the game to run in windows xp compatibility mode not sure how that really improves your performance but it does so whatever um yeah so now the downsides to this the reason i'm showing you this last is because if you try if you have this launch option set and then you go into uh in game and start screwing with your settings in there as soon as they get applied the game will just crash and it'll just crash until you remove this so basically add this parameter after you um, mess with all of your in-game settings and I mean have it all perfect and whatnot so another thing to note is if you have this parameter set and you alt tab out of the game the game will crash as soon as you try to tab back into it so kind of a moderately large downsize but usually when uh, usually when I'm playing I pretty much put all of my attention into the game and not so much other stuff that's going around on your system. So, I mean, weigh the pros and cons. If it's if the pros outweighs the cons for you, then go for it. I personally do, because I think performance is king. So, yeah. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I hope I've been some help for you today in increasing your performance. Uh, I actually, a lot of this information was uh, came from a, guy, a guide that was on the... Uh, Steam Community Hub for Daisy. It's been there for a while, and the guy can't, seems to keep updating it. I'll put a link in the description, so credit goes to him for figuring this stuff out, um, or at least posting it. I don't know how much of it he actually figured out. But. Okay, thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next one.